This is a practical effect known as a paper cut. I'll trim myself out. Oh shoot, that was my tutorial script. What's up everyone, it's Tim from Motion VFX, and yes, we have a new transition pack called M Transition Paper Rip. This is a transition pack that absolutely shreds. Okay, I promise I'm done with the terrible... I, <laughs> you know I'm not. But I'm actually really excited about this pack because it offers a lot of really unique transitions that have a lot more customization than you would initially anticipate. So let's hop right into Resolve and take a look. So once you have M Transition Paper Rip installed, we can go right into Resolve and go into effects and under toolbox, we'll bring that drop down, down, and then we'll go into video transitions, motion VFX, and then scroll down till you see M transition paper rip. We click on that and then we see all of our options here. Now, a majority of the presets in this transition pack are procedural, so you can adjust things like the seethe of the paper or what kind of crumpliness you want to really define the look that you're going for. And as another example, I can throw in this scratch transition, and if we go under our paper controls, I can also adjust the rotation of this scratch. I can adjust the edge seethe to determine what kind of texture I'm looking for and then the crumpledness of the paper textured background. Now one thing I really like about these transitions is to toggle a time freeze on the before and or after clip, as well as toggling some stop motion or adding stop motion to make it have more of a, almost like a comic book type feel. And I'm gonna demonstrate this using the picture transition. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this one on too. But what's nice about this is we can just get a spot in the air where we want it to freeze frame here. And let's say I want the background to start moving as soon as it pops on. Well, I can just untoggle this media two time freeze. And now as this one is just a still of an image, the background is still moving behind it. We can also move things like the rotation of the picture. I'll just go ahead and put 60 in here, not 6,000, 60. And maybe we determine that we want it to really fade out quite a bit as it transitions off. And I'll just make sure my render cache is on here. If we go ahead and play this back, we get a nice freeze frame here and it almost like fades off into the distance as it transitions into the next clip. And just to show off the stop motion aspect of it, I'm just gonna bring in this pieces in transition, go into the transition controls, and just to show the difference that this has, let's put the stop motion amount to one and play this one back and it feels pretty fluid but let's just turn out the stop motion amount. And if we play that back, we see we get much more of a almost jagged comic book type feel. Now, some other controls we have under these transitions that are really fun to play with are grain and leak, and some have some dust and dirt that we can play with as well. But we can just change this grain amount if we wanna change how noisy the footage looks as it's transitioning. And so we can zoom in and just check out this grain and a little bit finer detail. But we can determine if we want that grain on or off. Or a lot of them will have a leak to change exposure and make a flash to help the transition. And some of them are more prominent like this shift up one. So let's go ahead and put that in there and we'll skim to the beginning here. And you can see there's this flash that happens that we can also control. Let's go back to our leak parameters here. And we can adjust the contrast. We can adjust the brightness. And our primary sources of how we're going to affect how much it flashes are going to be our gain and lift. Very similar to how the color page would function. Lift adjusts primarily the shadows and your gain adjusts primarily the highlights. And sometimes these transition flashes can be a bit strong so we can bring that gain down quite a bit and still get a good amount of that little flash or light leak to start to transition off with. Now a lot of times with these extra controls they can cause extra processing or just might not look good right off the bat. Now most of these effects are on by default but we can always just turn them off if we feel like they don't add to the transition or help the transition flow better. So we can just turn those off and still have a nice looking transition that flows pretty nicely. And sometimes those effects will be inside your media or paper controls depending on which transition it is. But a good rule of thumb to follow with these transitions is that the more complex the footage is, the less complex you need that for transition to be. And of course the effects are to taste, but it's important to not keep it overwhelming. Now there are a number of custom presets up here 
which allow you to give a little bit more control over the types of transitions that we have at our disposal. For example, if we look at the transition we have right now, it's one of the shift transitions and we have four different ones with down, left, right, and up. We're a little bit limited to exactly where it's transitioning because it depends on which one we choose. But let's say we wanted to customize the rotation. Well, we can bring in our custom shift transition, which effectively does the same thing. However, when we go into this this one specifically and going to transition controls, we see we can actually change the specific rotation of where we want that transition to go, as well as where we want that transition to slide in from. Another example, if we go down to our zoom swipes, let's just choose zoom swipe down as an example. If we watch, we just have a zoom swipe down that zooms in on the footage and then zooms back out once the transition is done and the paper goes down through it. We can look at our controls here, how much we want to zoom and the zoom target. But if we wanted to customize different aspects of this zoom, so let's go ahead and put in the custom zoom swipe. We can input a specific rotation outside of just using the regular directions. A different example would be the crumple in and out. So let's just put in the standard one on just to show what this does. We have one that crumples the footage is transitioning from, and I'm also just going to turn off the grain for that effect and also the leak. And this just gives us a really nice paper crumble animation that I actually really like. But if we add this custom crumple in instead, we see that we have an additional parameter inside our media one controls, which is our media one slide position. And instead what this will do is it'll actually change the position of where exactly you want the paper to crumple. So we can put it down here in the bottom left somewhere if we wanted to, or I could slide it over to the right side. And we also have some transitions that use drop zones. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this exposed down transition in here, replace that. And right away we see we have this drop zone controls tab. And if we just go to browse, I'm gonna go to my desktop here, and I'm just going to pull in this wide still. And if we play this back, we see we have the picture that we just added as the in-between for the transition. And of course we can go in and adjust this drop zone picture if we wanted to bring up the scale a little bit and move its position and just give it the exact look that we want. But drop zones can definitely be really fun to play with and can add a little bit of extra context and flair to your transitions. Now that we're familiar with a lot of the controls that a lot of these transitions have, let's go ahead and bring in a couple others that I just think look really good. Let's go ahead and bring in the pull apart vertical. I'm just gonna throw that on top of here. And this one just genuinely feels like it's being ripped apart and we're starting something new, or it can just mean the passage of time. It's a very simple transition that looks just really good. And if I go up to my effects here, maybe I don't quite want this overlay underneath to be as desaturated, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of that saturation back. Maybe reduce that contrast just a touch. Something like that looks really nice. And another one that just looks really solid are the tear transitions. Let's go ahead and bring in tear right for this example. And if we play this back, we see we just have some really nice tearing here of the pages. And if we go up to our paper controls, we can determine what kind of paper we want here. And let's just say we didn't want this edge on the paper here. We could have a playback without that cutoff edging. And maybe I want that crumpled paper just to have a little bit of a different texture here. That looks pretty nice. And if we go back and play this back, we get a really fun tearing transition. And what's additionally nice about these transitions is that you can even use them for vertical transitions. So let's just bring in this tear down here. And you'll notice we have this portrait aspect toggle. And normally this tear down just has this nice little paper rip down the center here. But if we switch to a vertical resolution, it doesn't quite look right when we play it back normally, but if we select this portrait aspect toggle, now it works with vertical resolution. And even ones that don't have the portrait aspect toggle will still work natively with vertical resolutions. This gives these transitions so much flexibility, not just in normal timelines, but also in vertical timelines as well. Just keep in mind that due to the customizable nature of all of these transitions and how dense some of them can be, they do require a little bit more performance than a normal transition would. However, using something like render cache or reducing your timeline proxy resolution to quarter, it can make the playback a little bit smoother so you have a better preview. These transitions have so many uses though, it's definitely worth the wait. And speaking of well worth the wait, I can't wait to see how you 
rip into this pack and spruce up your edits. Okay, that was a long shot. But yokes, I mean, jokes aside, go visit our website, motionvfx.com, and check out this pack and many others that we offer, and see what you can do with this pack as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.